Good morning. It is November. I'm sorry, December 11th, 2022. Uh, welcome to another episode of Backstory with Dr. B. I've been doing my research trying to connect the philosophical threads of chiropractic vitalism to the historical trends of the 19th century and then further back uh, into the mists of time. And uh, I haven't really done much outlining because I needed to establish the direct link between animal magnetism, which D.D. Palmer practiced before, and was kind of like the, the jumping off point of his chiropractic uh, career, and the immediately preceding philosophical threads. One of the books I've gotten to help me with that is this one. Mesmerism and the American Cure of Souls. Just picked it up from the uh, New Zealand National Library. It used to be an old library book, 1982, first edition. So uh, the parallels between the formation and then the vilification, I'm sorry, the formation and the vilification of mesmerism with chiropractic are uh, quite interesting, especially considering Dee Dee ended up practicing it and had a lot easier time practicing magnetic healing than he did uh, when he started practicing chiropractic. I'm going to read a couple of passages from the book uh, just to kind of let you know kind of some of the stuff I'm thinking about. Um, so um, in the foreword, let's talk a little bit about American medical practice, um, or European really. Before 1876, when Pasteur and Koch finally isolated the role of microorganisms in producing disease, there had been a great deal of confusion as to the means of arriving at a competent diagnosis, let alone effecting a cure by the medical doctors. Whether out of philanthropic naivete or pecuniary self-interest, doctors of the people capitalized on the pervasive physical suffering of their peers. A much abused and fad-weary public learned to regard medical science with a cynicism mitigated only by its desperate desire for a more reliable program of cure. In other words, people were disgusted with the medical profession. They were told that masks worked. Oh, I'm sorry. They were told that um, uh, you know bleeding worked. Uh, they were told that standing 15 feet apart was going to help. They were told that if they took the vaccine that they would not transmit. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong page. I'm, I'm, I'm back to mesmerism now. Anyway, um, basically people were sick and tired of doctors' uh, bad practices in the uh, 1800s. <clears throat> the deplorable status of 19th century medical practice explains why Americans' interests were initially aroused by mesmerism, mesmerism's alleged healing properties. So, mesmerism. What is mesmerism? What were its healing properties? And how did it end up launching Dee Dee Palmer on a career to eventually discover chiropractic? Um, Mesmer's theory uh, did not. Mesmer did not. Uh, um, Mesmer did not attribute the success of his methods to psychological factors. He felt that there was literally a physical substance he was manipulating in their bodies. The curative agent, according to Mesmer's theory, the curative agent was said to be an invisible energy. Now, put in the back of your minds here innate intelligence, universal intelligence, and the force from Star Wars. Just think about that. And if you have a Christian background, think about the logos uh, from the Bible, the word of his power, all things are upheld by the word of his power, which could also be... Um, thought of as the space-time continuum, the, the dimension that we live in, um, from a, more from a you know, physics kind of a perspective. Um, the curative agent was said to be an invisible energy or fluid, which he called animal magnetism. He believed that he had at last come upon the etheric medium through which sensations of every kind, light, heat, magnetism, electricity, were able to pass from one physical object to another. Mesmer thus proclaimed animal magnetism to be a universal substance linking together every orderly process throughout nature. Moreover, this cosmic essence was also said to be more or less evenly distributed throughout the human body. If for any reason an individual supply of animal magnetism were to be thrown out of equilibrium, or more bodily organ oh i'm sorry one or more bodily organs would consequently be deprived of sufficient amounts of this vital force and would begin to falter since there was only one cause of illness it followed that there was only one truly effective mode of healing the restoration of equilibrium to the body supply of animal magnetism simply put mesmer believed he had reduced medical science to the passing of magnets 
over the patient's heads in an effort to supercharge their nervous systems with this mysterious yet life-giving energy. If that is not almost exactly chiropractic philosophy, boiled into a, you know, boil down or using other phrase, I'll, I'll eat my hat. It is just uncanny how similar it is. Next quote. So there, there we go with that. So that, what is mesmerism? There we go. All right. Mesmer's theory, thus in one, quoting, thus in one panacean stroke, lovely pun, Mesmer's theory brushed both medical science and religious supernaturalism to the side. The doctrine of animal magnetism reduced nature's established means of regulating physical and human affairs to a simple formula. Mesmer had laid hold of a principle that deflated the pretensions of rival healing systems by substituting, oh, by subsuming them under one grand drop doctrine. There is, he pontificated, only one illness and one healing. The obvious implication was that conventional medicine was largely useless. Any therapeutic value attributed to either religious or medical healing practices was owing only to their indirect effect upon the patient's supply of animal magnetism. Mesmer's methods were more direct. With sufficient concentration and willpower, a healer could capacitate, store, and transmit potent energies from his own person to the patient. And that is that, that is exactly what Didi was doing uh, when he was practicing as a magnetic healer. His method was for his patients to lay on the table. Uh, he would deduce the organ that was out of balance, and he would put his hand on both sides of that organ, and for 15 minutes, beam his animal magnetism into that organ. And for eight years, he made bank doing that. In the, in the uh, late 1800s, he had a whole floor uh, in Davenport, Iowa, and the Brady, I think it was the Brady Building, electric lights, electric heat. I mean, he was, he was doing okay. He was doing okay. So let's keep going. Oh, so success breeds opposition, and particularly people who have, uh, particularly people who have uh, a lot to lose. And so the scientific community in France decided to come against uh, Mesmer, and they did an investigation and formed a committee, Lavoisier, Benjamin Franklin was involved, although as usual he did no work. Um, they pulled together uh, this hundred case studies that were actually being treated by these, um, by these uh, mesmerists. Quote, all but six had already evidenced marked progress. Over one half claimed complete cure. These documents make it difficult to escape the conclusion that hundreds of persons who had proved incurable by conventional medical practices had found substantial, if not permanent, cure at the hands of Mesmer and his colleagues taking ivermectin. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong article. Just how to interpret these cures was and still is another matter. From the outset, the commission proceeded under the assumption that cures alone were of ephemeral scientific importance. In other words, results don't matter. That is literally their stance. They're going to decide why this guy's so successful, and they're going to they're going to approach it from the perspective that the the results he's getting don't matter. The substantive issue at stake, and here is what it is: you're doing a research study to prove a point by asking a question in a particular way. Have you stopped beating your wife yet? Yes or no, right? I mean, this is basically how they're approaching this. And this is, this is how they approach chiropractic as well for years, you, you know. Uh, the substantive issue at stake was the alleged existence of a new physical substance called animal magnetism. So they used their fascinating scientific instruments of the day, and um, they could not discover that uh, there was animal magnetism. Their reports concluded that there is no proof of the existence of animal magnetism, that this fluid having no existence has in consequence no utility. And as for the undeniable curative value of Mesmer's practices, it was promptly dismissed as the mere product of the patient's own imaginations. Isn't that nice? And so, so sorry guys, you don't get the help you need. Um, Many of the patients were like, no, dude, we totally felt it. We felt hot and cold fluids running through our body. We saw light come out of the guy's hands. Such phenomena were obviously the products of overactive imaginations. Unfortunately, no one paused to ponder just what a wondrous faculty the mesmerist had demonstrated the imagination to be. They basically had come up with the power of suggestion uh, and, and getting the patients 
inborn placebo effect to work for them. You know, the placebo effect is not your enemy. It's 50% effective. If the patient has a modicum of confidence in your ability as a doctor, you're going to get 50% results guaranteed because people want to be, by and large, helped, and they will, they, will, they will help themselves, but sometimes they need permission, and that's oftentimes what we're doing. That doesn't mean our techniques don't matter and that we haven't parsed out the most effective ones in an objective way, you know, but... but the placebo effect is your friend, it's not your enemy. Anyway, so let's keep going. Uh, and that was basically it. So uh, this is a classic example uh, uh, of how a, uh, a method that's succeeding, that they hinge on a doctrinal thing, like with D.D. Palmer, is it really a bone out of place? No, that doesn't actually happen quite the way he said it does. Is it innate intelligence, uh, um, this universal life force that you can connect to and help to uh, improve yourself in a spiritual way as well as a mental and physical way? Is that is that a thing? No, we're not going to go with that. We're going to be scientifically reductionistic. And, and the chiropractors that kind of were in charge of the profession in the 80s and, and up through the 90s made a concerted effort, according to this guy, D.D. Palmer's Traveling Library. This title does not describe the depth of this guy's thinking. Uh, I'm, I'm maybe a third of the way through the book, and it is a dense read. You can't just breeze through a paragraph. This guy put a lot of thought into it. And he's, he described how, how uh, modern chiropractic, uh, Reed Phillips, Jerry Klum, how they made a concerted effort to drop the metaphysical baggage from chiropractic and get us accepted into the club of medicine. And the Wilk case sealed the deal. And now we all get to play nice together, which is great. I love working with medical doctors. I think they're awesome. And emergency medical care has helped me a lot. But I think this is very illustrative of the way that you find what you're looking for and you don't find what you're not looking for. If you don't have the means of interpreting the data or you're not looking for it, if you're not looking for that signal in VAERS of vaccine injury, if you're not really questioning why the death rate worldwide in highly vaccinated countries is going up, if you're not taking that those, those worm-like things seriously uh, from that unfortunately, um, uh, unfortunately tainted uh, videos uh, died suddenly, which had some good stuff in it, but then a lot of weird stuff. It's like, why do you got to do the weird stuff? I mean, you had you had gold with the worm things. That was making me want to vomit. It was totally gross. What's going on with that? But you make it easy to dismiss the good stuff you have by jumping on, on the bandwagon of the bad stuff you have. So, um, great book. I got a couple more coming. I'll be getting to them in a minute, but... Uh, uh, for now, have a great Sunday, and uh, I'm going to go do some chores and stuff around the house. Talk to you later.